All right, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today for our webinar. So uh, content of today's webinar is going to be getting started as a freelancer. So what that might mean, maybe you're thinking of, of doing some additional work on the sides, uh, maybe you're already freelancing and you want to know what happens next. So hopefully we can um, we can give you some insight and tips about, about becoming a freelancer and, and working for yourself, I suppose. So um, my name is Ben. I'm the sales team manager here at Crunch. So I'm responsible for bringing on all of our new clients, be they freelancers, or contractors, consultants. And I'm with Luke, who's our quality coach here. So he's going to be giving some kind of valuable insight into what it means to be a freelancer and, and what we can do to help. So uh, like I said, today's about getting started as a freelancer, taking your first steps into that world of, of self-employment. Uh, at the end of the webinar, which probably be about 10, 10, 15 minutes or so, uh, there'll be a Q&A section so we can um, answer some of your questions live. So if there's anything that you really want to ask, uh, there's a drop down list in your GoToWebinar kind of widget, I suppose. Uh, get your questions in there, ask them at any point, you don't have to wait till the end. And then either myself or Luke will, will do our best to answer those questions. Anything that we don't answer today, we will circle back to via email. But yeah, get those questions in and, and we can do our best to uh, give you some advice. So for those of you that aren't already with Crunch or haven't heard too much about what we do, uh, we're primarily an accountancy service. So we're an accountancy software and accountancy practice. Uh, we help contractors, consultants, freelancers manage their day-to-day -day accounting needs. Uh, we also do other things alongside that. So we've got self-employed mortgages, small business insurance, and investments and pensions arm of the business. So what we're trying to do is become a, a bit of a one-stop shop should you be self-employed or, or thinking about starting off on that journey. So when you become a client of ours from an accountancy point of view, there's uh, kind of three, three elements or, or two key elements as presented on the screen. First of all, you've got uh, client managers and expert chartered accountants that you have access to an unlimited amount. So any kind of advice or support that you need, they're available via phone and email whenever you may need them. Um, and like I said, we, we support contractors, freelancers, consultants. Uh, we're pushing into the small business area as well. So hopefully uh, that kind of sums up the vast majority of the market. So today, what we're going to cover is uh, all the things that surround those first steps into freelancing. So why people freelance, how to go about it, things you need to think about in terms of responsibilities, maybe if you're still doing it whilst you're still employed, taxes that you need to be paying, structures of business, all that kind of thing. Now, as we go through, there's going to be some recommended reading on the bottom of each page. Uh, we'll give you a list of these after the webinar that you can take away and have a look and do a bit of your own research in your own time. Uh, but they'll all be linkable from, from the slides when we send them out to you as well. Uh, so first of all, what exactly is a freelancer? Maybe let's get some terminology up the way. Yeah, so a freelancer essentially is you're working for yourself. Um, you're going out to find your own work. Um, that does mean doing your own marketing. It means getting your sort of feelers out there, if you will, getting your name out and about. Um, the flexibility you get as a freelancer is massive as well. You work on your own terms. Um, you're not bound by employment um, contracts and things of that nature as well. Um, it's, it, as I say, you basically work for yourself and work in your own time as and when you want. That's it in a nutshell, realistically. Great, so we've got a really good uh, white paper called Freelancing for Beginners. That'd be a good place for, I think everyone to start if they're at least contemplating uh, going working as a freelancer. Uh, responsibilities, so what do we actually have to do? What, you know, we think we've made the decision, we're gonna do it. What exactly do we need to be thinking about? Well, you need to consider, it's, it's quite a fair few things to be totally honest. As I mentioned just a moment ago, you've gotta have your own marketing structure set up as well to get your name out and about there first so that people know about you and your business. Um, you do also need to consider certain administration duties and responsibilities with HMRC primarily uh, and Companies House, for example, as well. Um, Year-end accounts or something else, as if you are a limited company, you do strongly need to consider. Um, so that's where an accountant, an online uh, service provider can help with that. And your contracts and invoices, those are specific to yourself and the business that you're, you're operating. Um, so ideally, I mean, they can be one and the same contracts and invoices. It really depends on um, 
how it is that you're working with your end clients. Uh, sometimes they will actually provide you with an invoice and they will give you the money. On the flip side of that, you can actually send them an invoice if you're quoting them for the service instead. Um, and the last important point, and this one is extremely important, whether you're a limited company or a sole trader, personal tax self-assessment. Mm -hmm. um, so no matter which you're operating, you need to do cool. personal tax. Now we talked about limited company and sole trade, all those types of things. We'll come on to uh, later on in the slide deck uh, about how to decide on what structure is best. So we'll, we'll touch on that as we go along as well. Um, but most people, when they start freelancing, they do on the side, yeah, right? Just want to make a bit of extra cash. Um, a lot of the time, when it start, when people start, um, they're often employed at the same time as well. Um, obviously, starting a new business venture is quite daunting. You need to have constant money flow coming in, regular income. Um, so more often than not, most people will remain employed, have this as a side job, and then once that expands and grows and grows, you can stop your employment and just operate solely as a freelancer instead. Okay. Now, like I said, when we're thinking about how to structure your business or your, or your company, uh, this is probably one of the most common questions that we get coming into the, the kind of onboarding or sales team here at Crunch is, you know, I'm thinking about taking on this new piece of work, how should I structure my business? So there's a few real different ways in which you can structure your business. You can form your own company, you can elect to operate as an individual or a sole trader, uh, or you might want to work through an umbrella service. Now it really depends on a, on a few different factors, there's no right or wrong way in which you choose to structure your business, but it can vary depending on your contracts or how you, you're engaging. What we generally tend to say is that if you're earning over kind of 35, 40,000 uh, pounds as a freelancer, as a contractor, uh, you might feel some benefit forming limited, uh, a limited company. Uh, in terms of take-home pay, it's a little bit, can be a bit more tax efficient, but also can distance yourself from the work a bit. Uh, if you're just starting out and it's just something that you're doing on the side um, and you want to test the waters a bit, see how things go, probably sole trade is a better way to, to start out. The, the taxation reporting requirements are a little bit more straightforward and linear with a sole trader. And if you've got a really short-term contract, maybe uh, an in-between piece of work between two permanent roles, maybe anything less than three months as a contract, uh, an umbrella service might be might be beneficial for you, saving to this, the hassle of setting up and then closing down a limited company or a sole trader account. Um, so they're the main three main ways in which you can work. There's some really good recommended reading that we've got on our website, which you, you want to have a look at, but if you've got any questions, just get in touch with, with someone here in the office and we can talk you through it. Um, so we've potentially decided how we're going to structure our business main question that we get, I suppose, is what, what happens next, what tax yeah, work pay? Yeah, I mean, whether you're sole trade, umbrella, or a limited company, you're always going to have some form of income tax to pay, but this, the way it actually works is entirely dependent on which structure you go down, for example. So mm -hmm. if you're a limited company, uh, you would pay yourself very differently in the way that you would mm -hmm. if you were a sole trader, mm -hmm. for example. Um, the best way I can describe it, I think, is as a sole trader, everything that you earn is seen as income, that is your salary. Whereas when you're a limited company, you have business money and then you have your money separate. Mm -hmm. So um, sole trader, it all crosses over, it's all as one, mm -hmm. seen as one thing. Limited allows you the flexibility to actually have business money, your personal money separated as well. Um, but either or, it depends on circumstances, of course. One's going to be more beneficial than another for each individual. Um, but as Ben's already said, if you do have a circumstance like that and you want to find out what am I going to pay, which is going to be more beneficial financially in terms of tax, just give us a shout. Mm -hmm. And then we can always uh, give you advice based on your personal circumstance. Perfect. So you mentioned income tax. Mm -hmm. What about national insurance? National insurance, very similar. It is entirely dependent on the structure that you've gone down. For example, with limited, you can actually not pay national insurance on the salary, for mm -hmm. example. Whereas again, on a sole trader, as it's all seen as salary, you don't get that flexibility, unfortunately, mm -hmm. at all. Um, national insurance is the same regardless, no matter which structure it's 13.8, you've got loads of different classes of national insurances as well. Mm -hmm. um, depending on sole trade or limited, a sole trader self-assessment, you will need to report certain classes of national insurance, mm -hmm. whereas on the flip side with a limited, it's different classes that you report on the self-assessment. Okay. So you do need to be fully aware of that as well. 
um, because whilst national insurance can be used as a blanket term, yeah. there are different variations to it that they need to okay. be aware of. So any questions, speak to an expert. Yeah. Uh, so expenses, this is something that, that can be beneficial to a business, right, in mm -hmm. terms of totally. how they yeah, totally. have the tax too? I mean, the, the way to see this is with expenses is, I mean, in taxes in general, um, Generally speaking, you can only be taxed on the profits that remains in your business. Therefore, if you're spending money out, mm -hmm. you haven't got profit to tax on. Mm -hmm. So actually, in a, in a weird way, you spend money, you get tax relief on the expenses. So say, for instance, travel, food, um, business mileage, as it says, equipment costs, for example, you mm -hmm. can offset those against your tax bill. Mm -hmm. um, so say, for example, I had a thousand pounds tax bill. However, I spent £500 on expenses, mm -hmm. I can only actually be taxed on the £500 because yeah, that right. is my profit that remains. Right. So yeah, expenses are definitely beneficial. Um, but again, you do need to be aware that you can't claim all of the same things um, between limited and sole trader. Some yeah, things sure. you can claim for on sole trade, mm -hmm. some you can claim on limited. So you've got to do your research. And on that point about research, there are two separate mm -hmm. and very full and rich guides um, about limited company business expenses and on and also uh, sole trader business expenses as well. We'll send you the links to those once the webinar is, is finished. Um, so there's some habits that you've got here that people want to think about, you know, keeping records, all that type of thing. Yeah. Just want to talk us through that? Yeah, yeah, totally. So the first one, as it says on the bullet point, is get registered for the right taxes. Um, again, doing some research, making sure that you're not unnecessarily registering for things that aren't applicable to you. Um, so, um, keeping your records straight as well, things like receipts. Um, obviously, as we move into later on in the year, there is the uh, making tax digital as mm. well. So you do need to consider not only to keep hold of the paper receipts, but also if you can take photos, just have a folder somewhere at home mm. that you're just chucking all your electronic versions of them in. Um, business bank accounts, as it says there, is another as well. Again, going back to the limited company example, you want to keep your business funds and your personal funds separate if mm -hmm. you're a limited company. Um, sole trading, again, it can still be beneficial because if you want to have a, a plan yourself of what your mm. finances are like, you could do the same thing, just yeah, separate sure. them again. Um, next point is keeping your records safe and not missing deadlines. Again, mm. deadlines do vary dependent on the individual mm -hmm. and the business, when it started, when you became sole trader, etc. So you've got to keep your eyes on that. Um, and again, just touching back on the earlier point, by having separate bank accounts, putting money aside for tax, that's always beneficial to know, right, I can put this money in this account, I don't touch that, because that is yeah, just sure. the HMRC. So um, accounting software, obviously, Crunch, for instance, does all of this for you as well, mm -hmm. so you can actually get real time. So this is my money, this is business mm -hmm. money, you never then blur the line between the two. Brilliant. So here's a list of all the bits of recommended reading which uh, we'll put into the slide deck. Again, they're going to come out to you after this. So um, do research, any questions, you know, get them into us either now or, or give us a call in the office. We'll be happy to talk them through with you. But there's a, a, a really rich source of, of information there, which would be great to do some research. Um, in order to gain access to a lot of the guides and things which we've talked about, we've got a online community. It's completely free to join. It's called Crunch Chorus. Uh, there you're going to have access to things like webinars, uh, white papers, free invoicing mm -hmm. software, templates of documents, all sorts of different things. So it's definitely a good place to start if you're at least even considering moving to the world of self-employment. So uh, crunch.co.uk forward slash chorus. Now, questions. Now, there's a few questions that we've got here, which hopefully uh, you can give us some answers to. Yeah. Um, so, uh, when shall I tell HMRC? As soon as possible, to be okay. totally honest. So, as soon as you start trading or you have any sole trader earnings, any sort of additional income, you've got to tell HMRC. Um, so, as soon as you know, right, I've got this contract, you need to update HMRC about that. There's nothing worse mm -hmm. than not informing them and then six months later getting all the nasty mm. letters coming through. Yeah, sure. So just make sure that you get onto that as soon as possible. Okay. Um, is there a point where it's more financially beneficial to go limited? I'm currently a sole trader. Generally what we say is that once you're turning over more than 35 to 40,000 pounds in a kind of rolling 12 month period, you can see some financial benefit there. Now there are other benefits that go along with being limited, which you may want to give some consideration to, uh, but that's when it's 
generally speaking, at the point where it becomes more financially beneficial, that kind of 35, 40K mark. Um, what else have we got here? What are the key differences between limited and sole trader? Is it just the taxes or am I missing something? Um, I mean, the taxes is, to be honest, one of the, the, the primary things to focus on because um, there's a lot more mm. that you would need to take into account as a limited company. Um, as Ben's just mentioned as well, there are benefits to either. So it really does depend on your circumstances. Um, so what I would recommend is if you are running an erring between the two, just give us a call. Give us a call. Let us know what your circumstance is and then we can determine which which is best for you. Sure. Um, what have we got here? Can I operate as both a sole trader and a limited company director at the same time. Yeah, of course you can, of course you can, absolutely fine. Again, it may not necessarily be beneficial to do so, um, just because of the tax implications. You have to consider personal tax as well because you're drawing income from two different sources. Mm -hmm. um, again, if you find a situation like that, just give us a call or do some research online. Um, I guess the easiest way to say to be tax efficient is if you are doing both, just make sure that you're drawing the main source of your income from one yeah, and sure. not the other so that you're not crossing over and okay. then risking going into higher tax bands and things. So we've got one here, can Crunch help me determine how I should operate? Limited v sole trader, most definitely. Uh, the guys on my team are more than happy to have a free consultation with anyone uh, that wants to have a discussion about you know, going limited, starting out as a sole trader and what that might mean and implications of both and where to start. Um, I think that also kind of leads on to another question which we have here, which is, is there a specific order to tackle the very first steps, uh, re, HMRC, Companies House, et cetera, when starting a new business from scratch? Um, there is. I mean, if you're referring as a limited company, for example, the first thing you'd want to do is the formation, which you will need to do with Companies House. So I guess in a, in a step by step, it would be Companies House first. Then once you've registered that business uh, as an active trading company, you then want to get onto HMRC and start registering for all of the relevant taxes mm -hmm. to it as well. Um, you'll need things like the company's number, the business name, the incorporation documents, mm -hmm. the shareholder certificate. So yeah, as a step-by-step -step rule of thumb, company's house, then HMRC. Okay, great. So the, the company's house element is kind of the, the first step because everything kind of is in the company name after yeah, that. So exactly. things like insurance, business bank account, all that stuff is forms. And, and taken out in the business name. So yeah, first step would be form form the company and everything can fall in line after that. Yeah. Well really, first step would be talk to someone uh, like us who can who can help you out. And, On and the flip you. side of that as well, if you're a sole trader, mm -hmm. you'd probably need the first step to be HMRC, yeah. not Companies House. Yeah, like sure thing. Um, right, I think that pretty much covers it, Luke. So um, look, thanks very much for, no for giving us your insight. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we'll have more of these webinars coming up soon, so keep your eye out on things like our Twitter and, and all that kind of stuff. But thank you very much to everyone for attending. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you.